these five faces laying here are a couple I pulled out of a bucket from the quarry on top of the hill. Uh, that's the type of thing we were finding a lot of, a lot of broken ones. Uh, I'll explain my tools a little bit. Hammer stones, a heavy dia base, very similar in size to the one Bob was showing us earlier. Um, several, this is more like a granite here. This one's almost a real chalky limestone type of thing. Um, and these are just a little bit harder, quartzite type uh, hammer stones. Sometimes you see, well, if you get in artifact sites, you'll see uh, guys getting all excited because they found a game stone. And most often it's a hammer stone. They tell, we call them biscuit because they get to looking like a biscuit after a while, but it's a discoid or a game stone, but that's no, really a hammer stone. Uh, so amongst hammer stones, you have um, variants, variances in hardness. Uh, you have a hard hammer stone and the soft hammer stones. Um, you'll have a hard billet, a wooden billet. You know, this antler versus the this would be considered hard hammer versus soft hammer. And they will all leave a different, little bit different signature on the flake when you strike a flake off. A harder hammer will leave a much more concentrated bulb of percussion. A soft hammer will leave a, a more shallow, wider, a uh, bulb, sometimes it's not even a bulb, it looks like a lip, almost a lipped edge. Uh, so knowing, um, and it's variable, like I say, so even, you know, a lot of times I could pick up a flake and say, that was, I can say it was a soft hammer, but can I say it was wood? Or can I say it was antler? Maybe not. Might even be a hammer stone. Um, wood does tend to leave in some materials what we call lipped flakes. So when you drag your finger up over the platform, there's actually a little sharp edge lip there. Uh, you don't see that very often. In uh, So I don't know if any of you noticed me tapping on these pieces earlier. You know, this is all stuff that was rejected here. Uh, so the more, the better they ring, there's less cracks. Now on that side, there's crack right there. But over here, it's much better. So there is some cracked material there. This stuff tends to layer sometimes. Um, this one rings nice. It's a little higher pitch because it's thicker. This is one I was actually going to start on um, because it kind of has a natural platform. I don't know if any of you heard Bob saying earlier you want a less than 90, less than 90 degree edge. Uh, if this was 90 degrees, I would start actually start here and take short flakes off, which would curl and give me a beveled edge. But this already has a beveled edge on it. Uh, I'm gonna start with a little bigger hammer stone. This one's got some, some weight to it. Now, a piece like this can produce uh, some fairly large flakes when you're working it, which can be utilized into tools too. Come on. Now it's going to give me trouble. That's pretty tough rock. And like I said earlier, most modern nappers don't want to mess with it because they're just not interested. It's tougher. So it's not pretty. You know, it leaves a point that's just not finished, finished out pretty. And So I was just kind of trimming that edge where these this thin edge is, knock it back to more like this. I'm actually gonna go up a little bit in hammer stone size because there's a nice flake. That could be turned into one of these bifaces pretty easily. There's another nice flat flake. Flakes tend to run across ridges better than they do into hollow spots. So it's, I'm kind of working these ridges down to remove uh, another flake. They, they don't like to travel into hollow spots. And now they're hinging, what I call hinging there. So the flake goes in and breaks off. 
that's not good because they can be difficult to get past. But if you look at a lot of these bifaces that we're finding, you'll see those step fracturing or hinge fractures in this on the on the biface itself, which is probably why some of them are just rejected because they're hinged so bad. It can be very difficult to get past those hinges. So I'm just trimming this edge right now to produce a bevel on this side. Um, and if you look at that fracture pattern, it's very similar to what you see in those large pieces in there. Uh, it's kind of blocky edged. There, I need more of a taper than that. So I gotta get rid of that block. There we go. Now we'll see if we can flake this off with a wooden billet. Wooden billets tend to drive very flat flakes. Uh, the wood, it must be hard and heavy and dense. If it's too soft, uh, it just bites into the, it just sinks into the, sinks into it and doesn't really, um, doesn't really ha transfer the energy. One thing we don't find much on these sites is a braider. They're probably using rhyolite itself or the hammer stone itself. What's that? Seems like you could gash your hand. You could. Yeah. I've got many, many, many cuts. Cut this leg one time in Oklahoma. Didn't realize I even cut it. Flake came off and just kind of slapped me and stung. And the next thing I look down, the blood's just running down my leg. Socks turning red. Uh, so I'm gonna swing one of these wooden billets at that. Probably use this big one. Uh, I've cut the web in here to the point I could see the knuckle. Just duct taped it shut. <laughs> and I just crushed it. <clears throat> I'll rebuild that flake or flat platform, make it a little duller so it doesn't crush on me. Grind it a little more. The uh, issue with wood can be humidity. It kind of tends to soften it. There's a flake. If you just want to look at that. But it leaves a really broad uh, initiation. Nice flat flakes are great for thinning, flattening bifaces. But I don't, personally, I haven't seen much evidence of wooden billets here or up on top. It, if you get up on Snaggy, you'll see more of it. But that may be more because there's more of a broad spear industry coming from up there. Take a look at the amount of waste. Yeah, like I said, all of that came from making that biface. There's some big flakes in that, in that bag that could still be utilized. Right. Yeah, and use a rock. And the, and like I said, weather affects it too. The humidity today could be making a difference here. Wood can sometimes be drive underneath some of those hinge flakes. Now, that broke, but that doesn't mean I can't get the rest of that flake off. If you make it wet and stick that flake back on there like that, stand it up a little more and hit it more like a punch, sometimes that'll push the rest of that flake off of there. 
There's just too much mass there. It doesn't want to do it. But. Some of those steps, some of that those mistakes, are not mistakes, but the, the issues that Steve's having is why they left some of the stuff in yeah. the site. So they just were to discard it and pick up another piece. Yep. We're down in the valley or down close to Chesapeake Bay. They may have to, to lick it a little more. Or try That's little right. Or dip it in the bay. More, but at the quarry, they don't have to. Right. The heck on that. Just grab another piece. I, I want to drive this ridge off of here, and I think I can, I can get a platform here. I didn't, I didn't bring a good abrader. It seems counterintuitive to be grinding the edge, making it dull, but it needs to be done early stage like this to to drive these flakes off. There, see that went under, went underneath that hinge and pulled that hinge off of there. Now I can move over beside it. Do it again. Thinner, thinner, smaller the biface becomes, the smaller the tool you must work with, or you tend to break it. Another nice flake came off there. If the flakes don't travel past center point, it never gets thinner either. It just gets diamond shaped. So the flakes have to move a little bit to... doesn't want to go. Have you noticed much of a difference working different stones from say the bottom of the pit where it maybe holds more moisture? No. I haven't worked enough of it here yet. But moisture does make a difference uh, in rock. So there I'm, go I'm going to see if I can't punch some of that off of there. But I, I think Steve that was a good question that he asked and I think that you guys proved from the top Corey yeah. That you and Jack were able to use surface material for the material that you fire fracture. Yes. Fire small, as well as, I mean, it was just, you found that it was just as good as yeah. the stuff. Yeah. It may have more patina on the outside, but once you get through it, mm -hmm. the internal's just as good, yeah. For some of the early reports where you read, the person said, you know, this they threw it out there and they said, you have to use the bedrock material. You have to get the bedrock. That's, we're not proven. We're not, yeah. Our, our research and the stories that we've excavated are showing that they used or utilized some of the stuff that was on the surface. Steve and Jack Crescent has already, and Jack, was, Jack and Steve have been trained by Eric Callahan. They, they're able to take a piece off an exposure, and if it's good, it, it's fine. It works. Steve has worked surface material and produced beautiful yeah. points. So the old adage that it has to be deep, that we've not... Some of the early papers, like mm -hmm. college papers. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what they thought at the time. I mean, they... And that's okay. That's, that's how we add on. And then ours will be added on, too. I mean, that's where we'll say something that we're from now will be added on to approve, disapprove, or whatever. And that's how science works. So being at the quarry, 
and I get to this stage, I just toss it. <laughs> and it starts to frustrate me, I just toss it. If I'm at home, I'm going to put more time into it. <clears throat> So I can make flakes run short by standing my biface up like that too, so that uh, you've probably all seen a BB hit a window and it blows a little cone of glass out the back. That's called a Hertzian cone of force. So what I'm doing here is producing parts of a Hertzian cone because I'm not going through the center, I'm just striking the edge. So I'm only creating a portion of it, but that angle that that cone is formed at is very consistent angle. It's like 110 or 15 degrees. So if I, and that comes from the point of impact. So if I stand this up, that cone is going this way. If I'm striking against this edge to sh make a short bevel. If I lay it down and strike it, that cone reaches into the center of the stone a little better. So I'm gonna try to remove this from this platform here. I can find that little other little hammer stone. Grind this up. Didn't do what I wanted to, but I got it into there. I was hoping to take a bigger flake than that. So I'll go over here. Polish that up a little bit. It's not bad material. Sometimes it can have uh, stress fractures in it from just being molded or molten. There's also some metamorphosis that was going on here too. It's sometimes called metarhyolite. That can create stresses. And I will sometimes bounce around from tool to tool. You see that happening uh, depending on the situation. That just kind of comes intuitive. Up here at the tip I'm thinking I might go to an antler billet here. Uh, and I've also been finding, and I was talking to Guy Neal uh, this summer, that smaller billets at a higher speed, once the bifaces become smaller, tend to work really well too. And it's, this one might be still a little too big for that, but what I do with that antler? But as the biface gets smaller, there's a nice flake took off in there using a smaller billet like that at much higher speed. Another thing I've been messing with is punching too. So after a biface gets thinner, uh, take a punch and dry flakes off of it. Tends to stress the biface less. Uh, it's a little more accurate. Oh, there went the tip. That's all right. Trying to get a good platform, we can get that ridge, ridge off of there yet. Battering is sometimes like that. Is sometimes used on uh, by face edges too, particularly in church, uh, and it can in, it can help initiate flake fracture because you're inducing tiny micro flakes, cracks into it. That's tough. <clears throat> Dogwood is a good wood 
Hickory works well. Dogwood's probably the best after this. This is not native. That's boxwood from England. But it works great. No, no. That's, that's really hard and heavy. Um, you need heavy and dense wood. Uh, there's a wood called Osage Orange. Uh, it's heavy and dense, but between the growth layers, it's spongy. So it works, but it deteriorates. It chews it up really fast. Um, man, this thing should come right off. It'll make the platform wet too. Sometimes that makes a difference. Come on. They took that ridge, ridge off, removed that hinge fracture on the other side. Now it's starting to look a little more like a nice biface. Part of my problem is I don't have a good grinder. So my platforms are still a little too sharp. I'm not in top shape. When you, when you make it wet, what does that do for um, the, the water on the edge of the platform can help initiate the fracture just by driving it into the stone. On the back of it, um, there's some evidence that, particularly in argillite, quartzite, and rhyolite, that making, sometimes you'll see me lick the flake itself, that water penetrates into the surface fast enough to help that energy travel because there's pores in this yeah. this is porous so the more solid you can make it the easier the the um, energy f flows through it that just doesn't want to come off so like I said at this point it might get rejected at the quarry and we pick another piece up yeah. I'm gonna start with this big one and we'll see what we can get out of it. Strategy might be to just break it in half on purpose uh, because it's so big. This is so curved down here. That could be a fire spall. It's got curve to it. There's no real platform on it. That came from the part of the trench that has all of the rock in it. Yeah. Tons of rock that Paul excavated. Beautiful job. And then Carol thought, she thought that might have been a flake, so she went after it to see if it was a flake. It was flake. one laying on yeah. the floor. It's it was, got it was, ah. it was like that. beautiful curve to it, which we often see with, with heat removal so curves like that. So I think, I think I'm going to try to snap it in half right here through the middle. And there is some cracking in it. Maybe that's why they left it. I mean, it may not be good, but if it sounds like it would be. Let's tap on it, see what happens. This is pretty crappy at this end. Oh, well, it's not bad looking material. <clears throat> Tones changing as they get rid of that cracked, cracked material. So there's some layering in there yet. There it goes.
So I should just make a big flake blank, or like those ones we found earlier. Yeah. Hey Bob. Yeah. Have you kind of estimated yet how large of a workforce would have been dedicated to this task? No. I don't even know how to do any of that's been done by Dan Wagner. In any of the Selby Bay, just just thinking of the Selby Bay, since we have five dates that lend themselves. That, that tip might have fell off because I wasn't supporting this end. Have any information on this time? Master's degree in, uh, in Michigan. Okay. Corey's there. Yeah. On, on the Corey's. Yeah. He calculated how many people would have been there. We might be able to use something like that to draw comparison. Yeah, that's a good question. You're giving me more work. I was actually just sitting here thinking the same thing. Right? Yeah. That's okay. I'm you wondering got... if it's just one person who's just coming to that's like your job or if <laughs> Probably. Okay. You know, there's guys down in the pit doing their thing. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely there were people. Guys doing trimming by faces. And... The young guys. <laughs> and then Eric Kelly, how I saw him was funny whenever I visited him. He said, I said, Eric, how do they get those 50 ton hammers up there? He said, well, if that's how the Braves earned their feathers. He said, boy, carry that rock. I thought we that rock. So the young guys had probably were. Apprentice. Yeah. You want to eat dinner tonight? Carry that rock. Still got some cracks up here. Probably lose a little more of this tip. There's a good crack right there. You can see the mineral layer, layer in there. I've heard, I've heard stories anyways of archaeologically flake piles like this being found that were V-shaped like this, mm -hmm. where they surmised a the guy was sitting and chipping rock. Look at that thing's ringing. There we go. Get that edge back a little better.
Yeah. <laughs> we found one. I don't know if you know it or not, but we found one about that long. Maybe it was two inches wide and maybe half an inch thick early on the excavations down in where them big boulders are. Big biface. It was kind of crappy material if I remember. It wasn't as nice as this. And that's how hammerstones get lost. And because they're buried in the buried in the debitage. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cortex can be tough to get off. It tends to be spongier. This is wood. This is moose. And this one's moose. White tail. Yep. Yep. Moose in this region is technically not archaeologically correct. It wouldn't be moose down here yet. You see the Wood strike strikes are a little slower too. You let that weight of the wood do the work. Trying to pick the edges without creating a lot of step fractures.
not a it's not a bad piece of stone. It's nice. It's a nice piece of rock. You just got to get the crap off of it. You know, this side here, it's nice. That's not bad material. Yeah. So it, it like Bob was saying earlier, it goes against that idea that you got to be fresh spalls off of solid rock to use it. Right. What's your, I guess, technically part of the bedrock that you need to come off of? John, you would know more about that than me. Your science. I'm not sure if CPR can I'm pretty sure John is a geologist straight up, right? John? John knows all. I can prove it. I don't know. <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking to it, right? Uh, some of that's because it's so flat. I don't want to go that far right now. Sometimes you come from the other side, it'll flake clean. See how this edge of it's stepping, but this side's not? And you flip it over, you get the same thing on the other side. This is nice and clean, and that side's steppy. That often happens with this stuff. It's no beauty, but I wouldn't toss it back if we found it in the pit, you know? That, that big piece we found early on was kind of like that too. It was just kind of all stepped up on the one side, along the, along the edges. Oh. Every time he hits it, <laughs> somebody's got to watch the whole thing, count every strike. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Since you didn't show up.
Uh, we need to sweep the tarp and and do it. Well, I got two different pie faces in here though. Something else that I've kind of been experimenting with is the hammers. If they could haft an axe, a stone axe, there's no reason to think they couldn't do that. It totally changes the way the physics work. And it drives, you can stand it up and drive into it a little harder. I wish I had a good abrader. Um, and get some super flat flakes come off. I'll see if I can, it's coming apart, it's taking some abuse, but see if I can get this flake to come off. I've driven some huge flat flakes with that hammer like that. What is the hammer made out of? This one's hickory. This one's hickory. I think this one's hickory. Look at the lip or the, see how wide and flat that platform is. So I've made some, I've made some big flat bifaces with the wooden hammers. Another thing that's important when working a biface is not to get the middle too thin. If the middle gets thinner than the ends, it's going to snap in half at some point. You get shock waves going down through it, um, and it'll snap at that weak spot in the middle. It's important to work the ends first, if you can, and keep them. Keep the ends from getting, leaving them too thick. <clears throat> And sometimes you can't be afraid to sacrifice a little length to build a point or a platform. And like I said, use a smaller tool for a smaller job. So I'll switch hammers to this. Take that because I'm down at the tip, which is a little more fragile. 
I've seen guys using that same thing with antler, mounted antler. You don't need a big billet like this. It changes the physics because all of this mass, instead of glancing past it, is being driven into the this way into it. You can use a smaller billet and develop a lot of power with it. The angle of the of the strike and the biface itself, yeah. So you can control that to some degree. And usually when my biface starts getting thinner is when I start licking it. That flake ran all the way over. A lot of control with the hammers too. Nice flake there. See why there was a lot of waste here. Yeah. Oh, nice and clean as flakes come off. hit that with the bigger one because I want that whole thing to come off. And it's still it's riding over top, not cutting deep enough. Some of that's because the platform's too close to this side instead of this side. Need to move it up. You're right, we would have left long already with this. Really? Yeah. You'd have, you'd have Stick it in the pack and go. <laughs> That's probably why we're here, right? I'd like to see the stuff they took with them. So Steve, it's obvious that you have a vision of what you're trying to reach. Yeah, that's oh, what he said he'd have tossed it. Yeah. Um, oh. not too far. I'd like to get these step fractures off of here and thin this edge of it more. And then I'd probably leave it. But it's going to be a trick to thin this side of it from here now with these step fractures. Um, would you take that with you, or would you, if you had the time, or would you have just quit on that one? And I'd probably take it with me. Well, you've got a trick.
truck, so we know what you're Yeah. <laughs> your, your truck leaves here today, it'll be 30 pounds. Yeah, down. everyone carries a bucket full of rock down. <laughs> These are, this is going to be a trick to get rid of at this point without losing a lot of width. Might be able to clear it from here, but that's big flakes and driving them all the way across. And I don't know if that's going to happen, but I mean, you can understand why there would be so much, so many of these partially done. You get to a point, and you think, you know, there's time better spent on some other stuff. Yeah. You fling it, and you got a nearly endless supply yeah. here. Because Paul's down in the pit going. <gasps> Yeah. Look at this piece. <laughs> and I'm going, give me it. <laughs> that happens. I've done exactly that in the quarry. The guy next to me is going, <gasps> and up in the Jasper quarries one time. <laughs> I'm going to go for that side. I'm going to use the big billet, see what happens. Delicious. Tastes like dirt. <laughs> Come on, you dog. Went halfway. Maybe the licking thing is just superstition, but a lot of times I can peel a flake right where it's been licked. This is dry stone. I've got to lick it twice. Come on. It's tough. That's for sure. I'm probably working on it longer than they would have. Yeah. Running in the middle. This is nice material here. I just can't get that cortex off of it. Maybe I'll sit up on the bucket and Get a better swing at it. Do you remember some of the artifacts that I'd show you that had that, that thick piece kind of right in the middle and they just couldn't get Stack in the middle, yeah. yeah. Coming at it from each side. Yep. You can't get to it. Yep. I don't know if I have any good stacks. That one's kind of stacked up on both ends. But same, same idea. Nice flake, but it still didn't go through and clear it. Teach them, taught them how to be men, right? Let's go nap some man rock.
They're down there on the bay playing with them little jasper cobbles. Let's go nap some man rock this weekend. Come on. There it goes. Sometimes strategy can be to come at these ridges from the point. You run a flake in there and you can clear some of it and you run another one this way and so on down. So that's what I just took a flake off there. I got some of that cortex. I'm going to try to do one right here too. See if I can't drive some more of it off. That just made more step. Another way to go at that ridge is to hit it right there. But that's dangerous because you'll get, you can get what they call end shock. Snap it right in half, yeah. Might be worth a try though. And I can make a replica of a snapped by face. <laughs> Yeah. Key to end strikes is platform prep for one thing and then support of the piece. So if I hold it like that and hit the end, the end's going to fly off. If I lay it against my leg and hit it, it won't do it so quick. Or my side of my boot or something support that tip. Some of the fluted points that I do, I freehand, but I'll wrap them up in leather like this so the entire point is supported by that leather, dampens the vibrations. And I got a crack in there yet from that, probably from that one flake air dove. Still falling out. I can see stress lines in it on a diagonal this way now that I'm working the end. That's what's causing this on this side and the same thing on the other side. I'm going to try to run a flake down that ridge and see what happens. <coughs> Just for demonstration purposes. We're going to try to flute it. Yeah. I got that ridge here. Gotta get rid of it. Irritates me. <laughs> I don't have a good. Well, after he flutes it, we should probably get back and finish up the digging so we make sure that we get through it.
Not good. That's not a good sound. Of what? Two pieces of rock. In Two future head. pieces of rock. Or a future. Yep, that's for sure. So I'll throw it back in the pit and somebody else find it. <laughs> Someday. Some guys would have a hissy fit just because I'm here doing this. Yeah. No, you right. just have to check, wrap up that tarp and take all this stuff with you. We do have that going on, guys and girls. So that's what we, we there are. That's why we use Steve's on social, some social media platforms where he tells people what they should do because if you go on to an area that's they don't like it most of the time. Historic in nature, and you, a lot of people like to be in the environment that the natives have uh, like the Metacroft Rock Shelter. So you go there and you nap, but what you're doing is you're creating for some future archaeologist someday stuff that is there, and they're going to interpret it as being prehistoric, and it's not. It's right. a napper that sat down there. So uh, do, putting a tarp down like this and taking that with you uh, is the way to do it. Yeah. That's me too. I don't that's, uh, I just like to know how it detaches. I don't <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to hit it like this. And if you ever tried it, you'd want to have eye protection and protection on both, even though Steve's leaving the one hand, I would have gloves on both hands. These can really do a number on your dexterity, but there's plenty of gloves like this around. It depends what I'm napping, that's what I use. And they're almost like not wearing a glove. And, but they will protect your fingers, and I used to get a lot of cuts. And I'm holding a by face like this. And, Flakes are coming off right here in my fingers, and I get a lot of cuts on there. And some, those some nappers have cut themselves really, really bad. I have already. And then there's a disease, John. You know what it is? What would you tell me? Oh, don't turn your head. <laughs> the Brandon Flint nappers. What did you oh, say? silicosis. Yes. Yeah. So if you're napping in an enclosed environment, yeah. They they did a study. There's an ethnographic study on the Brandon Flint nappers. I've done some. I've done some. Uh, airborne silica test with, yeah, and it's it's about three times higher than the OSHA and PEL. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of people quit after some time because you're breathing, even though it's producing what we can see, it's producing stuff that you can't yeah. see and you're right. breathing in. And that's the stuff that does the damage. And it's going to cut, get in your arm. But he's in open air, so it's right. being... But these guys that nap inside. Plus, there's a certain amount that you're sucking in that's helping him. <laughs> as long as you have Bob within five or six feet, a draft will be produced. Yeah, I'm, I'm sucking up. Loose. <laughs> I will probably get back to uh, uh, digging. So, um, yeah, we'll see what I come up with. I'm going to keep working on it until it breaks. Right up over the hill, you'll see a little building. Yeah, just keep walking. You'll see a little building, that's not it. Let's keep moving. Pick a tree. Right. Okay. Young archaeologists don't know how to handle that. Oh. Are we ready to take off, Don Wall? We're going to look totally fast Paul with that. Oh, okay. I want to see if we're going to look fast. That's the arm boy. That's cool. Oh, that is big. 
being uh, stubborn. Yeah. But. You gotta give another one. Why do they keep getting me? Because it's so entertaining. It's free. You know, I can't them? imagine. Well, I know. Oh, no, no, I mean, Paul. I can imagine that it's entertaining. November, you gotta do another one. Hey! Another one. Knocked it off. You did. Well, the one in there it is. Put that piece back in and hit it like a punch. Oh, was there? For the yeah. last one? Yeah. No, I have to For do the one that we had. There wasn't hardly that. Anyone. I don't know. We'll see. There's a big biface I have down in the. In the frame down there has that flat back surface on it. Yeah, good. That ridge will come off there pretty easy. No, the one at the top. Just set a platform right out the edge of it. Drive that ridge off. Yeah. Come in this way. Yeah, piece of cake. Piece of cake. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's set up perfect. <laughs> Yeah, this one's amateur hour. Yeah. You got that covered. That's a better use of your time. It really is. How did you Where's Connie at today? Oh, she's, she went out camping, I think, with some friends. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You pull down, and then your weight. I wanted to... I wanted to say happy anniversary to him. 11 years ago is when we met at Fort Hunter. She wouldn't tell me who she was. I got part of it. Look at that. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. I'll get towards the end sometimes where it's starting to look like there's no hope. Yeah. I'll just start way on on it. If I don't break it in half quickly, I'm going to keep working on it. <laughs> just got to finish it off here. It just wants to step. You can see it, see the lines it like in it. Yeah. I don't think this is going to be stabbing Paul. Oh. I'll run down to the truck and get one of those. <laughs> What's that? We got a stab pole or the show's not over. <laughs> you got a what? Stab pole. Oh, yeah. What, 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 oh, I can put a point on it quick. <laughs> not a pool until there's blood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's just, that could be why they tossed it, too. Yeah. They saw that in the end of it. Before they did all this work. Yeah. And they were like, this is not worth it. Right, because it's going to be this. I guess it's, it's a situation where there's just, even if there's decent rock in there, it's probably not worth their energy. Right. To worry about it. Right. Well, see, they got more experience with it than I do. Oh, and count 
to strike and count all of the strikes. And <laughs> yeah, I agree. Show up or deal with it. <laughs> yeah, it's better than having to write a paper and then me have to grade that. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. I would tell you to make up a number. Yeah, for my project. Right, somebody's got... 52! <laughs> what? <laughs> I saw him strike it at least 52 times. And then I lost count. <laughs> Come on. Riley has been found all the way up into New York and down, way down into the Chesapeake Bay. It's pretty wild. Our Riley. Our Riley. Yeah. So would you say this Riley is one of the best quality on the East Coast? Um, no. <laughs> the North Carolina stuff. The North Carolina stuff. They have a lot of junk too, yeah. but they have some really high grade that we don't. But they're farther away, right? Right. So, it it has a it has an expansion just like this, but uh, you know, there's a couple little points that I had down there that were from up near Newville. Uh, I posted them on Facebook, and the guys down in North Carolina were laughing at me trying to tell me it was at Mount Rudolph or whatever it is down there. I was like, uh, I doubt it. Are you on Facebook as Steve Nussley? Yeah. What's that? That must be Brett coming down. Oh. Her truck was there, but my understanding is that she was uh L Y L Y. Well her daughter they were gonna go do I don't know when that was. It's been a while since I've been Yeah, when I talked to her, my understanding is that she was supposed this was her last camping trip this season. And we we do see a lot of shitty points when step fractures made out of yeah. I mean, they... They did it. <laughs> oh, no. Really? No, they don't. What'd you say? What is oh, it? Oh, be damned. All right. right. 